Welcome to The Pathway. We're digging into Amos 3 today. And Chad's message really kind of invited us to think about what house we're investing in. And so as I, as I listened, as I read this passage, kind of working through The Pathway, you know, the verse that really stuck out for me was verse 14. It says that, In the day I punish Israel for their transgressions, I will also visit destruction on the altars of Bethel. And the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. That's probably kind of a strange one to be like, hey, that's what really stuck with me from this passage. But I think the reason was, I hear altar and, and that should be a good thing, right? And Bethel, if you look at its history through the Bible, it's called that because Bethel means house of God. So these feel like things that should be a good place. And so I wonder, you know, one of the questions on the pathway that got me thinking was, I think it was the second exploring question. Like, what do you picture when you hear the phrase, house of God? Well, I probably picture a church, right? Maybe a cathedral, maybe something really ornate, and maybe you just picture horizon. But as we've worked through this passage, we, we began to see that God wants us investing in something different than just a building, right? That we're invited to think about what it looks like to really invest in an eternal house, in the house of God. And so I was tying this back. If you remember when we were in the Hillel in Psalm 118, just a few weeks ago, there's this moment that Jesus is described as the cornerstone. And in the New Testament, actually in 2 Peter, his friend Peter takes that idea and says that because he is the cornerstone, then you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. So this week, I'd encourage you to pray and think about what does it look like to invest, to build up the spiritual house that you're a part of? That, yes, we have expenses for a building, but the building itself isn't really God's house. It's, it's us, it's you, it's me. And so the, the first try it that you'll see on the pathway, I'd encourage you to let that be a prayer prompt for you this week. To pray about your investments. Not just financial, but time and even spiritual gifts. And if spiritual gifts is something you've thought about, but maybe you don't know what yours are, the idea there is essentially that as a Christ follower, when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, he gives you the gifts that you need to accomplish what he has planned for your life. And so I'd be happy to talk to you more about that, or maybe if you're in a group study, you can ask your leader, because those are some of the ways that we invest, that we find what is it that God has given me, where has he put me, and who am I around as we continue to invest in his house together. So I'd like to just pray for you that way right now. Lord, our God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you that you are the cornerstone of the house you're building, that 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 symbol, that image, that metaphor of who we can be in you and who we can be together in you is something that you don't leave us to figure out on our own, but that you, through your spirit, provide for us. You know, in, in financial ways, in relational ways, and even with these spiritual gifts. And so God, I'm just asking right now that in Jesus' name and by your spirit, you would help us to see how we can invest in the things that you want to invest in. That you might even awaken in us an awareness of gifts that you've given us and, and things that you've offered us to be able to serve you. And we will trust you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen.